This is Patrick Morris with Sputtering Components, and today I'm going to go over Rotary Cathodes 101, Introduction to Rotary Cathodes. We'll start off with a brief outline and go over what is a rotary cathode. We'll go over the hardware assemblies, the part names, functions performed by the rotary cathode assemblies, and other end block options that we have. These are rotary cathodes, along with the device that was shown on the previous page. So what are they? What do they do? Well, a rotary cathode is a device used to sputter a target material from the surface of a rotating tube onto a substrate. The cathode is defined as the target tube surface since the electrons are no longer traveling through the metal conductors, but actually leaving from the surface and entering the plasma. If the phrase target tube leaves you wondering what that means, well, the word target, as in target tube or target material, simply refers to the surface that the ions created in the plasma have to hit in order to sputter the material. Now rotary cathodes are composed of several key assemblies. This internal mount rotary cathode is composed of the internal mount and block assembly, the cathode assembly which comprises of the target tube, clamps, target end cap, and magnet bar which is held inside the target tube, the end support assembly, and lastly, all of these assemblies are mounted to the vacuum chamber, lid, or door. The physical location of the substrate's motion path relative to the target tube surface is a critical process design characteristic. The substrates typically move in a linear path past the target tube surface and are coated with the sputtered material as they pass. You can imagine the target tube surface where the plasma forms as a linear array of spray nozzles spraying paint at the substrates as they pass by. The distance between the target tube and the substrate surface is a critical process parameter that limits the coating uniformity. This distance is known as the TTS, or target to substrate distance. The TTS, shown as the vertical line to the right of the substrate, usually ranges from 50 to 200 millimeters and the uniformity achieved is a function of the substrate size and the target tube length. For typical applications, we can take the substrate size and add four times the TTS to get the approximate length of the target tube. Now here is a picture of a rotary cathode with a simulated plasma on the target surface. The plasma on the surface of the target tube forms within the magnetic confinement produced by the magnet bar inside the target tube. The sputtering process is not sensitive to orientation, and the target can be mounted in any direction. Horizontal and vertical target tube applications are the most common configurations. When mounting the target in a vertical orientation, the end support assembly should be on top of the target to make the installation and removal of the target tube easier and to reduce the wear of the magnet bar bushing in the end cap. This internal mount end block assembly is composed of 10 key components that are visible in this picture. The end block housing, which is machined from a solid block of stainless steel, the ported plate, the end block insulator, the spacer block, the target mounting flange, the central utility shaft, the water passage and fittings, the power bus bar, the vacuum seal cartridge, and the drive belt. These individual parts work together to provide all of the functions required to operate the rotary cathode. The end block housing is the base that all of the critical parts attach to. From there, the target mounting flange and belt hold and rotate the target tube. The central utility shaft is used to hold the magnet bar in place inside the target tube. The water passages, ported plate, and water fittings are used to circulate the water through the cathode assembly. The power bus and all of the components above the end block insulator are used to provide process power to the cathode. The end block insulator and non-conductive drive belt are the primary components that isolate the high voltage components from the grounded lid assembly. Maintaining vacuum sealing during target rotation is a critical function and is easily handled with the vacuum cartridge along with the end block insulator. Lastly, the spacer block is used to provide the correct target to substrate distance. This is a critical because the distance between the lid assembly to the substrate surface is usually a fixed distance. 
On the other end of the target tube, the end support assembly provides another set of functions. It prevents cantilever loading on the end block assembly by providing another bearing surface at the free end of the target. It provides a redundant electrical insulation between the target end cap and ground that prevents short circuit conditions even if coating builds up in between the target clamps and the end support dark space shield. It provides dark space shielding by providing a small gap between the target clamp and the electrically floating end support assembly. The dark space shielding prevents the plasma from forming between the two surfaces and keeps them from sputtering. The end block assembly also has a dark space shielding around it that was not shown in any of the previous pictures. Lastly, the end support has a permanent base that allows the assembly to move for thermal expansion of the target and makes changing the target quick, safe, and easy. Due to the wide variation and sputtering process requirements, many different types of end blocks are required. SCI supplies different size internal mount end blocks for different size substrates and target lengths. The larger end block assemblies are able to support longer targets and deliver substantially higher power and higher cooling water flow rates to the target tubes. When using an internal mount cathode is not an option, side mount end blocks can often be used. Side mount end blocks mount to a chamber wall instead of a lid or door assembly. Side mount end blocks support cantilever target installations which are limited by the target weight. And most of the parts and functions are shared between the different types of end blocks that we have just reviewed. This concludes the presentation of Sputtering Cathodes 101, Introduction to Rotary Cathodes. Thank you for your attention, and if you need any more information, please visit our website.